I wouldn't know. Can't read. Right. Um, what are we doing? Um, for map. Okay, we're gonna start up here and then go that way this time. I think. Bollocks. Or should we? I kind of feel like we had the good tactic of going like far furthest away first. What we'll do is we'll do these. I think. Because you're technically going back on yourself then, aren't you, really? So we'll do these, and we'll do that, and then we'll come back around you. Right? Right, right? So theoretically, that I've just thought Good about... Good morning, Providence. Is that... Technically, this, this game's got an ending in, like, two weeks, isn't it? Is it two weeks? So, we're starting the day as we always do, with a PO positive or pet P, followed by the weather. PO positive or pet P. So Damn, far, what you gonna be? Way. It's a positive all the way, Jack. I went to Moe's Diner yesterday, and I don't think I've ever had blueberry pie that tasted so good. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you much, Dale. That makes me want to get a piece right now. I but don't think Fifty Shades would be uh, would we'll be popular if it started like that. Not that I've read it or anything. I think you might have done, now? mate. I think you might have just uh, dropped yourself in it there, love. No shame in it. First point of call is actually admitting that you've got a problem. Uh, I'm confused whether it, I think it's that one. I think it's the yellow house, right? 402. 402. That one. It's a box of chocolate. It's a box of chocolates or a, a hat. Hats come in boxes what like that, I think. Right? What these folks order? Circular hats, not square top hats, because that just won't make any sense. Not caps, but you know, like pristine hats. Maybe. Might be a bowl. Don't really know, do we? Commander Grace, we have established communication with ground control. How do you wish to proceed? Tell them we've landed the rocket! Ground control, oh we have landed the rocket! I thought, I thought she thought she was buzzed lightly and then. Our experiments. Um, package for the Evans family? Just a minute! Commander Grace, permission to explore? Permission granted! We're the Evans family. Could I just take that real quick? I'm kind of in the middle of a lunar landing. Sure. Here you go. <laughs> nice helmet, by the way. Why, thank you. I actually modeled it on the Apollo 11 crew outfit. Wait, what? Meredith? Buzz Aldrin? <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Who are you? What? For real? You don't recognize your old best friend when you see her? Wait a minute. Kay? Great. And now I busted my colander. I knew opening a door in this thing was a bad idea. Yeah, uh, that one. I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you with the colander thing. The helmet. Yeah, clearly. But it seems I'm not the only one who came in disguise. Got me there. Uh You're Kay Evans now? Don't sound so surprised. But yes, I married Barry. Evans? I'm sure you remember our high school star quarterback. Mom! Be right there, Commander Grace! Scanning for alien life forms. That's my little scientist back there. She's crazy about space travel, as you may have guessed. Even after the whole Challenger thing. You married Quarterberry? And had kids? I had no idea. Well, obviously a lot can happen in 22 years. So... I guess so. So, I heard you were back in town for a while. From Maureen. That's right. I ran into her yesterday at the diner. The kitchen caught fire, so your Uncle Stan is gonna have a field day. Nope. It's Moe's diner now. Like I said. A lot of things happened while you were away. Also, I work there now. At the diner. That's great. Maybe I'll drop by sometime. Yeah, we'll see. Ready for a liftoff! Listen, I'm sorry, but I don't really have time for this right so, now. So, can't get stuck on the moon on my own. She's and bugging I off. She's really bragging here, she is. She's bugging around, off then. for 22 years. Good to see you, Kay. Evans! <laughs> and not one straw in those Commander 22 Grace, years. Hold up! You'll she never guess what I just found. You can say that again. I mean... 
That's very strange, that, isn't it? Or is it? I don't know. I mean, obviously, maybe they didn't get along with the parents. But it sounds like they get wrong, they get on with the parents and family, right? So why would you not come back in 22 years? I don't know. I've never really got that. I mean, I get people do that, right? For whatever reason, and that's completely fine. But I don't know. 22 years is a very, 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 very long time without going back somewhere. Or even, like, visiting once for whatever reason. Weird. Strange. West, how was your stream last night, mate? I checked your VOD and I, did you get Surgeon Simulator 2 working? Apparently there's a few bugs and stuff with like inviting people to uh, to play using Xbox Live. So it sounds like we got away with it, Gorda. Uh, 351, 351. Uh, that one. Uh oh. Latest movies. Latest series. VHS and Betamax. What was Betamax? I don't know what VHS is, but what's Betamax? Any American in? Or anyone that, that knows? What the hell is Betamax? Welcome to the Flick Shack. How can I help you? Got a package for you, ma'am. Hold on. You're our new postal worker? Talk about not looking the part. Yeah. <laughs> is that a compliment? Trust me, it definitely is. Thank well, you. Thank you, then. Name's Meredith, by the way. Meredith Weiss. Angie Eastman. So, what brings you to Providence Oaks? Uh, I used to live here. Um, well, I used to live here. Then I didn't, and now I'm back. Ah, I myself have been here for six years. Must have been in your didn't period. Yep, that would be smack dab in the middle of it. What brings you here? I used to live someplace else, then I moved here. Hmm. Touche, Mrs. Eastman. Miss. Oh, you've done it now, haven't you? Back to the present. I've just realized that. Stephanie Spiel Hemel. <laughs> a a Rob Zanikis film? Brilliant. Nice one. Um, so, how's business? It's. Oh, it's Howdy. booming. How's it going, People Kev? in Providence Oaks sure like their movies. We're delivering parcels, it's mate. It's a dream come true. there's not much else to do around here. Might as well watch a flick, right? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. You certainly have a lot of them. Choice is everything. Gremlins. Nothing quite tickles the imagination like the, the right Thermominator, the right as I say. Hmm. Maybe I should watch <laughs> more movies. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Eastman. But call me Angie. And here, someone oh, just Angie. returned this, and it should be right up your alley. The postman always rings. It's not Gremlins, once. West. It's Gre it's Gremlins or something. Betamax was the competing media to VHS. Okay. We never had that, though, right? Did we? In the UK. I've never heard of that before. It's like, hey, do you want to come over and watch your uh, Gremlins on Betamax? VHS 1. Oh, so it's kind of like... HD DVD and Blu-ray DVD or whatever that was. What was that thing that lasted about a week and then Blu-ray just took over? <laughs> My kind of humor. Well, I don't know anything else about you, Mrs. Temporary Postal Worker. <laughs> Miss. But touche, Angie. All right. I'll check it out if I have the time. Take your time. This isn't exactly the most popular flick in the shack. And there's plenty of choice, regardless. Okay. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Angie. Yeah, we did. Same before here, we were born. Oh, right, okay. Right, okay, that makes sense. Because I... So, the the way... Because I think this is, like, based in, like, the like 80s. Like, late 80s. Like, 87 or something. And then the way that it was, like, there. It was, like, VHS and Betamax. So, obviously, it was still around at that time. But I've, I've never, I've heard of it, but I've never actually seen it or witnessed it or had any idea what it was. So it must have gone out of fashion, as you said. Or gone out of business and whatever. Rendered obsolete before we were born, as you said. 
So what was it? Was it an, was it a tape then? Well, it's obviously got to be a tape, hasn't it? Because like again, CDs and DVDs weren't really a thing. Uh, I think these are both male, right? I don't know. I'll check it out. This is Grove Street, looks like it, doesn't it? This is Grove Street in the 80s, and then they started building, like, loads of buildings over there, and then that's how it's become Liberty City. Hmm. Same handwriting as the one I delivered next door. Yeah, and it was Betamax I and VHS. Our parents would Are know Betamax digits? more than us. We were more VHS. Yeah, yeah. What was the one that came out with Blu-ray then? Was that like HD DVDs and then Blu-ray? Because I remember for like, again, like five minutes, there was like a competitor to Blu-ray. And then everyone just jumped on the Blu-ray bandwagon because I guess they were better quality or something. That was a bit before my time in terms of, obviously I was alive, but in terms of like DVDs and stuff, like we didn't get DVD players until like way late in the game. Same with computers and internet, really. I just played with a rock and sticks. Okay, so the plan of action is we'll go I know I said that we'll do that next, but sod it. We'll do these, then we'll do that, and then we'll loop back around and come back. And then that's day two done. Got a wide berth. Uh, West, what did you say? Yeah, there was HD DVD, but it didn't last long. That's the one I was thinking about. Uh, disaster would not work. So just if you'd like to team would tweet at me and everything. Really? That was well cool. Well, it's not cool that it wasn't working. Gordo, we just got lucky then, mate. We didn't get PC till I was about 12. Hey, mom and dad have new neighbors. Siegler, huh? Don't think they ever mentioned them. When did I get a PC? We had an old crappy like Windows 95 PC that didn't run anything. And then I got a PC for doing well at like school, I think it was, for like leaving high school with good SATs or whatever it was at the time. And then at that point, it was like a family computer, though. It wasn't just mine. What is this? Good question. It's called Lake. And we're figuring it out at the minute. Um, and then that was like with the little shitty dial-up modem thing. Oh, no. I think... No, we had a modem. We didn't have dial-up because, again, I missed that window of dial-up. I, I obviously... I knew what... I know what dial-up was and how you had to wait for, like, line by line and, on, you know, to see a boob or whatever. Um, but we had, like, a modem at that point. Which was still like, I don't know, a few kilobytes a second or whatever it was back in the day. Back in the day. Um, and then, yeah, I didn't get another one until quite a lot of years after. Uh, this place. Oh, she's going to talk to us. Probably. Windows ME was the first one I had. When was that? When did that come out? I would say I got a PC young, but it was mostly, it was mostly my dad's and my brother's. Yeah, so that was the Windows 95 for us. It was mainly my dad's. Because it would not run anything else for, like, me or games. Meryl, dear. I remember. So oh, it's the same woman. By. Oh, it's quite the emergency. What's wrong, Miss Jenkins? It's poor little Mortimer. He's fallen ill, I think. One minute he was full of life. The next he, well, he just wasn't did he eat something he's almost catatonic he's we'll say that one sorry heard it when i said it i definitely Please say that in a situation like that be a dear and take poor mortimer to mr mackey he runs the bait shop by the lake he'll know what to do okay let's do that sure let's be I'll a good right samaritan on. here little kitty come on Wonderful. Be nice to Meredith Mortimer. Don't shed too much hair in her van now. Bye, Miss Jenkins. Bye, Meredith. 
See you soon, Mortimer. That bear had something in it. What do you think? <laughs> do you think the the so Sorry about that, mate. Do you, do you think the sun poisoned the cat because he's jealous of him? <laughs> um. So it was. It was 1999, 2000-ish. M-E equals millennium. Ah, okay, right. So I, so we had the 95 PC. Is that where I'm taking it? Where am I taking it? That one. Uh, okay, we'll do that and then get that one and then come back. We, uh, we got the Windows 95 PC. And then I got the Sims for, like, Christmas. And, I, and because I didn't know anything about computers back then, I just thought that it would not, you know, automatically run on the Windows 95 PC. It would not. Um, it wouldn't even install or anything like that. So then, what I would do then is just read the manual, like, back to front. Because you didn't have phones, we didn't have internet, like, so I couldn't, like, watch YouTube videos or whatever, because that wasn't a thing. So I just look at their pictures on the back of the thing. So fucking sad. I used to, what well, are we taking them? I just used to, like, flip through the manual every, like, every other day or whatever, as, like, my reading. And then just dreamt about the day that I could finally play the sim. And then eventually, I got a new computer. Which I want to say was maybe about a year or so afterwards. Or six months. It felt like a year. Probably wasn't that long. And then I was able to play the sims. True story. Then I played it about a day. And then I gave up after that. Did you ever get those PlayStation magazines every month? I did. I wasn't subscribed to it, but I used to go and get them. Because they were the only way you could get a, a demo, wasn't it? Back in our day, mate. God, we're fuck old, mate. You used to get a demo disc, didn't you? With a magazine. And then, uh... And then you used to have to get cheat codes in a magazine. Or if you got stuck on a game, you could only go to a game and get the, uh... The big, thick, dock-off manual thing. None of this, like, Googling. My Mr. how Mackey, times have changed. I know you're close, but... What? I'm Meredith Weiss. Yeah, yeah, Meredith Weiss. Thomas, kid. I remember you running around the lake when you were yay high, getting into all sorts of trouble. What can I do you for? Mildred Jenkins tells me you know a lot about animals, and, well... Oh, hi there, little fellow. What's your name? Apparently, it's Mortimer. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mort. Hm, he's a little sluggish. Has Millie been feeding him cupcakes again? Uh, I have no idea. To be honest, I have no idea. <sighs> Leave him with me. I'll put him on a diet today. Maybe even catch him a fish if they're biting. With any luck, he should be up and running in the morning. Sounds good. Uh, by the way, how are you? Thank you, sir. By the way, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. You go back to running around that lake, Miss Weiss. Okay. Bye, Mr. Mackey. Bye, Mortimer. Bye. That sounds about right, doesn't it? I remember those demo discs. Miss those days. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, as Wes said as well, just playing the same level all over again. I remember, um, so I had a, I, I had, I had a lot, I had a collection of demos over the years, because I used to just get magazines every, every month or whatever. Um, and then there was a Metal Gear Solid 2 demo that came out. That was like the beginning mission when you were Snake. That led up to the point where you did everything on the hangar. Uh, on the hangar ship and then you go through a door and then that's it like it's like play the new game or whatever like in a month's time two months time or whatever and I used to, I just tanned that game mate. I just did everything differently Because it was so good Well, yeah, what else? Oh, yeah, you used to get um, I never did it because I was a good boy Um, my mom and dad never let me we used to get chipped discs as well, weren't they? Were they called chipped discs? Where, like, they were obviously counter, you know, copies and counterfeit and whatever. And you just got a 40 pound game for like five quid. And they had these weird cartridges that you could put in the back of your PS1, couldn't you, or something? 
I don't know why this game has just started making us reminisce, but I like it. It was like a weird... I think it was like... I think it was technically sold as something different. Like for cheats and stuff. And it was like a cartridge thing that you could take. I think if memory serves me, right? Because I can't... I'm trying to put Used pieces to think together. Our dam that there was a flat thing on the back of your PS1. And you then could you put this Hooper like down. device in. And it was intended for like cheats or something. Like... That then you can input... Co oh, what? I can't remember. But then someone cracked it or something and then as like a secondary option thing you could put these like cracked discs in and then again you'd get like a 40 pound game for like five quid that you could buy off like the market stores and stuff that's right we had one you used, used to get five games for like 20 quid we used to do the disc swap trick i never knew what that was oh my god i remember them my dad used to get them all the time because we didn't have a lot of money yeah Wait, where's the package? That's a very good point, that love. What the hell was that? Oh, it was an arcade machine. I thought I was getting shot at then. 400 Lake Road. Oh, okay, that would be the one with the 4 zero, zero one in it. Yeah. Because I used to, because uh, we, we used to, we used to go to Wales like every weekend. And you get like, it's not like a market in the sense. No, it, it was like a market. It wasn't like a car boot sale in the sense that people would sell shit from the house. But it was market where like you get traders and stuff like that. And then you'd get people that sold those kind of games. Just willy-nilly, just out and about. Like, where police could go bast and stuff. But I don't know if it was... I mean, it obviously was against the law, wasn't it? Which is why I was never allowed to have one. But they'd just be there playing his day in, like, shitty little CD cases. Right? That were, like, dead thin. Instead of, like, the fat ones that you used to get for the PS1s and stuff. And then the guy's just printed off the front cover or something. Or, like, drawn it on. And it's like, you know... Siphon filter 2 or something and he's just drawn it on. Do uh, you know what I mean? It's yeah, uh, it was fucking stupid. It's bizarre. Mate. Hello, bizarre. sir. Parcel for you. Um, I hope I'm not disturbing, but here's a parcel for you. One minute. I'm busy. Okay, sir. Is that a parcel for me? No, it's for Bigfoot. You can just put it on the counter. I'm not I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna be cheeky. You're welcome. What a douche! Okay, we've done everything for the day. Let's go back, Istan. September the game too. I didn't even realize that, mate. Didn't even realize that. It has just come out though, I think, so that would make sense. Uh, quickest way is... Oh, we can fast travel, can't we? Yes, mate, I know. Hold on. Stop being mood. Stop being needy. All right. I'm streaming, bro. I can't just message you straight away. All right, love. I saw it. I saw it. It's fine. Just message me. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oregon Trail Hotel. Oregon. Hey, what? Where's the dog? That's what I want to know. There it is. Hi. Oh, hi, Steve. How are you? Busy as two peas. Added 87 is really getting there. Hey, listen, you've got plenty of time, right? Uh, no. I guess, but that's nice for a change. Awesome. I need a favor. I sent a bunch of files your way. It's the retail pitch for Added 87. It's good, but not great. It needs your magic. Do you think you can add it? Huh? <laughs> I don't get it, Steve. Uh, when do you want the feedback? <laughs> nice one, Steve. When will the files arrive, and when do you need the feedback? Ah, oh, well, it should arrive tomorrow, and I need it yesterday. Really? I can just send it to your post office, right? Uh, 
Yep, can't miss it. Yep, can't miss. Awesome. Mail back to me as soon as possible. Priority mail. Thanks so much. Oh, I gotta run. Okay, Steve. Oh, one final thing. Now let this marinate. <clears throat> add it, 87. Add anything you like. It's fancy, right? Yeah, don't, don't, don't tell me now. Uh, I got a jet. Bye. <sighs> Oh, it was an old game back in day. Okay, right, cool. Uh, stay home and read a book again. The Countess and the Carpenter. Oh, here we go. Story time. Two. Cecilia hated old Mr. Nabenshoe's table manners. The way he slurped rhubarb into his digestive system was quite the dampener on Cecilia's appetite. She wanted to get out of here and drink and dance with the common folk. Every night, she heard their merry noises travel through her bedroom window. The sounds of real life. Okay. I wish it was that quick for me to get through a bloody chat. Oh.